no matter what's love. Everybody. But everybody's afraid of love. Everybody. You know, I'm a true believer of that. A believer. If you get anything out of life, anything out of life you got to put up with it. You got to put up with it. Because you know that's the way I feel, people. Now listen. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a homie, Bobby Womack, in our background today. I just got something. It's short video. I, I, I got work to do. I got work to do, y'all. But I want to let y'all know, because it's important that I explain this to you. Because you need to see this. I was right again. Man, I'm not surprised. You've been, and, and no, no, we ain't even gonna go through that because we already done had this conversation at least, at least a hundred times in the past week. So no, and don't worry about it. Ladies and gentlemen, as Bobby Womack is talking about the way he feels, we're gonna talk about positive law. We talked about it yesterday. You guys have heard the phrase before. Some of you don't realize you've heard the phrase, but you've heard it before. So let me go ahead and explain to y'all what's going on. Because it's important. Impotent. Oh, my mama was impotent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Positive Law of the Code is the title itself. Wait, wait, wait. It doesn't say that. It says Positive Law of the Code is itself. Uh-oh, I got uh, UPS here. So y'all got to hold on, okay? Got to go get some UPS in this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I was back. What's going on right now? And I said right now is UPS just dropped off some supplies so I can hook up the gate because I'm going to put the panels on the ground. And I didn't want to just put them on the ground ground. I want to surround them by some type of fencing area, then put up the cameras, then start hooking up the solar. Because right now it's 98 degrees, but it's a comfortable 98. Okay, it feels feels closer to 89, if I had to guess. All right, let's get back to this, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, positive law. Title of the code is itself a federal statute. Statute! Pay attention. The title itself is a statute, okay? Now, I want you guys to understand this. A non-positive law title of the code is an editorial, editorial compilation of the federal statute. It's just editorial like in the, the Wall Street Journal. You can count on it to be non-true. Okay, let's go on now. Can a positive law, we're going to start right here. Can a positive law title be rebutted? That's what they ask. So they say, the statutory text, uh-oh, wait, hold on, hold on, statutory text, you mean the actual text of the law, that's right, the, the actual text of the law, appearing in a non-positive law title, in a non-positive law title, well, I'm sorry, it cannot appear in the title, pay attention, statutory text cannot appear in the title, hold on now, did y'all understand that, funky? Come on, Kumo D. Y'all know about Kumo D and him and LL having their little battle? I gotcha. Hey, 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 y'all. I can take y'all way back if you want me to. Kumo D. A legend. If you don't believe me that he's a legend, look him up on YouTube and see how much credit this young man gets matter of fact you know what i did i watched the youtube it was like a youtube documentary because <laughs> i can't call it a documentary a youtube documentary and the documentary on youtube really went and talked about his life how he got started uh what he would not allow in his raps and the battle with him and ll cool j and all of that it talked about all of that and what he's doing now i even watched one on special ed and that's who I haven't downloaded yet. And you know, I got to download me some. I am a magnificent. And you know about getting paid. Me and me and me and my boy, we're going we gonna to be playing 
in a minute. All right, let's get back to this non-positive law title. Non-positive law title is in a, is itself a legal term, ladies and gentlemen. Why do you think I keep highlighting it? The reason why I can tell it's a legal term because it keeps appearing in exactly this format. Non-positive law title. It doesn't say title of non-positive law. It doesn't say positive law title that is non-positive. No, no, no. It says non-positive title. Law title. Law, 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 law title. That's exact phrase. So it says, uh, you can rebut it by showing that the wording of the underlying statute, you see, the underlying statute. What's the underlying statute? Well, the code is taken from statutes at large. Well, what gives statutes at large its legality? So long as it doesn't violate the Bill of Rights. If it violates the Bill of Rights in any way, then it is not positive law. Because the Bill of Rights says Congress shall make no law which abridges the rights of the people. That's how you rebut the law or the, the statute. Do you guys understand this is why Casey Davis could say it's a fundamental principle of law, administrative law, that any time a court is enforcing a statute, they are possessing no judicial power whatsoever. Why? Because the courts are supposed to be enforcing the law, not statute. So when they're enforcing something administrative, it's administrative. It is not law. So all of the hearings you're having are all administrative if they are bringing forth some type of a stupid statute. You don't believe me? Hold on. Hold on. Let me... Wait, hold on, y'all. Let me show you. United States Congress. Some are called positive law titles. Some are called positive law titles. And the rest are called non-positive law titles. Again, these are terms, terminology. Positive law title of the code, positive law title of the code is itself a federal statute. A non-positive law title of the code is an editorial compilation of a federal statute. For example, Title 10 of the Armed Forces is a positive law title because the title itself, because the title itself has been enacted by Congress. The title is positive law, not the code in the law. You don't have to rebut that. The courts are supposed to rely on facts and conclusions, conclusions of law. Well, presumption of law has no conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. Presumption of law is supplication. So I want to tell y'all, like Kumo D just said, how you like me now? Thank you, Kumo. Thank you. That's Kumo D, ladies and gentlemen. And if you ain't know nothing about no Kumo D, and how you like me now? Wait, well, I know you remember the Wild Wild West, the movie done by Will Smith. Okay, Wild Wild West from the original. I don't know when the, the Wild Wild West, the original series, came out. I just know I watched it. I know I watched it. I think was was James Garner in the Wild Wild West? Cause see, I'm a big huge fan of James. Okay, James, my homie. Okay, me and James Rockford Files and man Maverick, but we go white man James Garner. That's my homie, and he played in so many other recent movies that that you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you guys to understand is what we're talking about right now. You guys need to understand they're bringing you guys into these courtrooms and they're bringing statutes. Hey, you guys, those of you who know about white lines, okay, got a little bit of Grandmaster. Grandmaster Flash, ladies and gentlemen. I told you we're going to go back from now on. Almost a thousand songs. We're going to go back. So, just need to let you people know. Now, we're going to continue with this video so that I can get this done so I can go back to my work. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This is from the actual congressional website. 
This is an actual snippet that they permit to be online. Title 10, Armed Forces, is a positive law title because the title itself has been enacted by Congress. Not the law, but the title has been enacted. As we showed you yesterday, there are too many mistakes in the code and they have refused to fix it because it will take too long to make sure every word is correct. Why? Because they codified it. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys know that the changing of a particular word when you're translating from English to English can change the whole meaning of something. Now, unlike with the scriptures, when you change an English word from something that was translated from Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, it doesn't change the context. It's when you change the Hebrew word, the Aramaic word, and the Greek word, it's when you change the context. And people haven't understood that in translated because they haven't done their study of translation. The English language changes every 20 to 30 years. We use a lot of words now. They, they make fun of it on, I, I was going to talk about this before I got off anyway, the TV series, This Is Us. I'm on the fourth season. I've been watching it, not binge watching, because I don't binge. I, I'm not an alcoholic, nor am I drunk. Okay? Um, but I've been watching This Is Us, and I understand why This Is Us has hit a core with so many people. Because that particular show deals with every aspect of life for both so-called, so-called African-Americans and Caucasians and Italians, which are still Caucasians, okay? It does with every aspect of life. And I do like the premise of the show. And some of the things, I, I, I cringe when I watch some of it because I can't, some of the stupid stuff, I can't watch, okay? But once I skip past the dumb stuff, and I'm not talking about all the dumb, dumb stuff. I'm also talking about the stupid stuff, you know, like uh, the incident at the pool or the incident where somebody's dancing and they do something stupid or they sit up there and they rip a tape up. And, you know, I can't watch stupid stuff like that because it hits too much on reality. I've seen that before. OK, and that bothers me. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and explain. A show like This Is Us. The people who are watching it, they're familiar with the information. What you guys need to understand is the people who are watching this video right here are not familiar with the code. They have, All their lives, they've been hearing that that's the law and you must follow the law. They've been hearing that a penal code is law. Ladies and gentlemen, the official office of the law Revision Council. Okay, and here, wait a minute. They are talking about what positive law is. Look, first section of the Act of August 10th, 1956, Chapter 1041, Statute at Large. This is what they're this is what they're saying is supposed to be the actual law because it was an act of Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something so you get it. This is 1 USC 204. See, just because, well, everybody says, just because they put something on, 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 on the screen, no, just because somebody posts something on the web, I don't care if they're, the, they're a .gorg or .org or .morg, it doesn't matter what they are. Don't take their word for it, people. Make them prove it like you try to make me prove things, mother. I apologize. I wasn't supposed to go there today. Today's a good day. Okay? Just like the UPS driver going to ask me, how's my day going? Told him, look here, mother. Okay? That, that, that was my. Why is he sniffing up his nose? He shouldn't be sniffing nothing up his nose. I'm waiting for it to refresh, so give me a second. 
<clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Allergy time. I don't know why I got allergies now. I ain't had no allergies the whole time I've been up. Yes, I have. But anyway, uh, with all the wind blowing, the wind is actually blowing from the east to the west, and that's causing some problems for me. So y'all hold on a second while this pulls up again. You know, and I also realized in the last three days, I've gone through five gallons of water. Just about. I probably got about a gallon and a half left. So three and a half gallons of water in the last three days. That's a gallon point two five of water. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. The code and supplement. The code and supplements. The codes. Codes and supplements as evidence of the laws of the United States and District of Columbia. Citations of codes and supplements. The codes and supplements as evidence of laws of the United States. No, 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 no. I don't want the evidence of the law. I want the actual law. I don't, I don't want to base it on no evidence. That is not evidence. That's not proof. No, show me the proof that that's the law. I got the right to challenge it because I'm looking at something right now enacted by Congress that says that something ain't law when it should be law. In all courts, tribunals, and public offices of the United States, in all courts of the United States, at home or abroad, my mama was abroad, anyway, of the District of Columbia and each state, I ain't never said that day before in my life, but I like it, so I'm going to use it from now on. That's mine! You can't have it. I don't care if you thought of it before me. I just thought of it, so I created it. Just like the United States came over here to this land and took it from the people because they said, uh -uh, I just discovered it. I don't care if you've been living here for 80 years. I discovered it. It's mine. So I'm following tradition. So leave me alone. Territory or insolent possession of the United States. United States Code. United States Code. The Oh, pay attention. See how they have this capitalized? Now, you know what I noticed when I'm typing with uh, Microsoft Office? It always takes state and lowercases it. Why does it put state lowercase? Every single time. Every si but it will capitalize the name of the state, but will not capitalize state when used in the context of the United States or the state of. Ain't that interesting, huh? Okay, this is George Michaels, ladies and gentlemen. The late, great George Michaels. And he's talking about having faith. So y'all just have a little bit of faith as we go on through this little code right here. The matter set before are set forth in the editions of the codes of laws of the United States, current at any time shall, together with the then current supplement, if any, establish prima facie the laws of the United States, general and permanent in their nature. No, I'm sorry, they can't. Because we just have it on good authority that Congress has said that there are over 600 mistakes in the code. Hold on. Gotta have faith. Mm, I gotta have faith. Because I got to have faith, the faith, the faith. I gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Ah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if there are 600 mistakes, that makes this act of Congress the term positive law. See, again, ladies and gentlemen, these are terms. Positive law titles versus non-positive law titles. Term. When you hear them, lawyers, using the phrase legal term, they're talking about legal terminology, i.e. legalese. Okay? Hold on now. This is Gladys Knight, and she's talking about how she's guilty. I'm guilty of trying. She's guilty, y'all. I'm guilty. There he does. That's my girl. Y'all know about my girl. Gladys Knight. Wishing her the very best. Nine videos. 
explain each of the common legislative stages and process, but I didn't ask this. I said, hold on. I said mistakes. So let's get rid of mistakes because she's talking about being guilty. I'm guilty. I put 600 errors. 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 Not us. Errors. Okay. Detailed guide to the United States code content. Why would I want that? That's not what I asked for. I said errors. And none of these focus on the errors. That's interesting, ain't it? See, I'm just being me. I'm guilty of loving and hating. This is from the album Just For You. Gladys Knight, ladies and gentlemen. I believe this song was also written by Babyface. Hey, somebody talking about Dred Scott. The Citizenship Clause, designed to strike out against both the Black Code and Dred Scott, gave Congress the power to overturn this order, not just by going after the action in state governments, but also through past laws that affirmed that African Americans were free and equal citizens. No, Congress could not affirm that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Northwest Ur Ordinance, the Northwest Ordinance already made it illegal to hold anybody to involuntary servitude. Go back and read the Northwest Ordinance and you'll see that the 13th Amendment wasn't some new amendment. It was already the law. The Northwest Ordinance was law and they ignored it and called them people who are black. They said, hey, what the, y'all ain't got nothing coming over here. Better go talk to your mama. You know, that that's what they did, you know. Okay, give me a second, y'all. I got to put y'all on pause. I've got Gladys in the background, but I got to put y'all on pause because I can't find anything doing the general search. So I have to go to my search. So one second, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, in my background, we like to move the crowd. Rock him and Eric B. Okay, there are some of you who understand what it is when I'm playing Rock Him and Eric B, what that means, okay? And if that man wouldn't have been so stubborn, God, he would have been a whole lot more than he is now. But anyway, that's what stubbornness can get you. Consequences. Okay. But quite clever. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, go ahead and get some under my standard. Roy G. Fitzgerald. Look this mother up. He is the head member of this committee. And notice what he talks about. I got a call coming in from the Postal Service. They've been messing with my mail. And so this is a supervisor calling. So y'all hold on one second. Good afternoon. Give me one give me one second to take you off of my Bluetooth and put you on my speaker. Sorry, you should be able to hear me better this way. Yes, much better. Okay, but go go ahead. I was expecting a call. Oh, okay. So, um, from what I'm understanding, okay. So, the, the you were receiving mail, but then what happened was that the carrier was doing it improperly. You should have not have been um, handing you your mail because uh, your address doesn't. Uh, not a valid address. Okay. And what makes it an invalid address? I'm sorry? What makes it an invalid address? Because the only way we can do a delivery is if there is a certificate of occupancy. And the certificate No, that is not true. Occupancy. That is not true. We both know that. You don't need a certificate of occupancy because it's a home. Now, that's the first thing. I looked at the code. There is no such thing as a certificate of occupancy. I'm not renting from anyone. 
So if you can show me where in the regulations that it, Congress has stated that it is required that someone has a certificate of occupancy in order to receive mail, I would like to know where that code is. Okay, let me go look for it and I'll go right ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. I apologize. I see you guys heard all of that. Good. Give me a second so that uh, I can turn down Rakim and Eric B. I do apologize. I forgot to put it on pause. But now you heard what I was talking about. And you, you all can see how I handle conversations with people. That was a supervisor. She works at the Consumer Affairs Office. She's the supervisor of the postmaster for this area. All of a sudden, all I needed to do was provide proof of a valid address. So I went down to the assessor's office. They gave me proof of the valid address. That's the reason why I was being quiet is because I was looking for the letter from the assessor's office that I got the other day. So, uh-oh. Let's make sure that's over here. Okay, that's these papers right here. Got a lot of papers. So that's what I do. I do the paperwork stuff. And so while I went and got something from the assessor's office, that's where they directed me, all of a sudden, when I brought it to them with the stamp from the assessor's office, you know what they did? They said, hey, homie, uh-uh, you now need to go do this, and then after you jump through that hoop, you got to go do this. And I'm like, you must be out of your mind. And y'all know that's how I talk. So you must be out of your mind if you think I'm going to be driving 150 miles each time you want to come up with something new. So she started arguing. Now, you notice how that woman said that the postal worker, oh, the reason why I put her on speakerphone is so that my phone will record the call. The reason why she was mentioning that the postal worker, you know that, that worker, said the postal worker was doing it incorrectly. Sorry. He made an agreement, and he did so under his authority at the post office. And that so-called implied consent agreement, that's right, I said implied consent agreement, because that's what it amounts to. That implied consent agreement was a contract. And he promised to deliver it. The only problem is he never, ever told me that things changed. Nobody told me. I had to go and find out for myself. I'm not about to play games with these idiots. And so I just have to go through the motions, okay, because they want to play, and I don't. I ain't got time to be playing. I, I, I ain't got time to be playing. I got too many things to do, place to go, people to see, things to know. And so I just, since I left you guys on, I don't feel like redoing the video. I'm just going to... You know what? No, I'm not going to redo the video. That that conversation wasn't private or anything. That was just so you guys know what's going on and you also know how I respond to certain conversations with certain people. Now, getting back to what they're trying to do, when I purchased the land, ladies and gentlemen, they are now claiming that I need to have a permanent foundation. That is a lie. There is no law requiring in California for a person to have a permanent foundation outside of city limits. Go ahead. Take a look at all the mobile homes out there. Throughout the whole state of California, California is a mobile home state. Mobile homes everywhere that don't have permanent foundations. 
Now, a mobile home yard, yes, they got to have a permanent foundation, but not the mobile home yards out this way. They don't have to have a permanent foundation. The post office is telling me that I need to have a permanent foundation. The post office has no jurisdiction over that. They don't control the regulations. So what the post office did is the postmaster said she called down to the county, called down about my business. Really? Who gave you permission to call them about my business? That wasn't your job. There is nothing in the regulations for you to be calling them about me and my business. She did so because there's not a lot of pepper in this area. Matter of fact, there ain't no pepper in this area. And because there's no pepper in this area, but there's a whole lot of salt, a whole lot of salt. You know, there, there's some cinnamon, but there's a whole lot of salt. And because there's no pepper, people are treated a different way. And that's what I noticed, especially when I asked her to speak to her supervisor. The reason why I ask people to speak to their supervisor, and I already have planned what I'm going to say when they give me the response, I am the supervisor. When they say stupid things like that, then we have a problem. Because the moment they say something stupid, oh, I'm sorry, I definitely got to pause y'all one more again. This time I'm going to pause. Okay, what I do is I put about four gallons in the generator. And for the last three days, I've been running that. And now the four gallons are up, so now I got to go add more. Have I have plenty of stuff to add to it. The only problem is, didn't feel like doing it now. I can always do that later. And turn it back on later because I don't need it now. Like I said, we are 101 degrees, but about 91 is what it feels like. So about 10 degrees different because this place is insulated. And with having the windows open at every angle, I can draw from the air outside. And by the time it comes in with the different awnings that are out, the air is cooler. Yay! Okay, let's get back to the post office. Basically, they were snarking, <laughs> you know, in the background. When I first walked in to see the postmaster the second time, I'd already spoke to her the first time. She told me to go to the county assessor's office and get proof that the address is valid. Said so I needed a valid address from the assessor's office. Well, I went there. The assessor's office, who came to the property, assessed the property, gave it a parcel number, gave me a valid address. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't even deliver to the addresses out here. No, they have these temporary boxes. I'll do this real quick, and then we'll get into this and finish this video, okay? But let me show you all something. Uh, let's do U-S-P-S-G-R-O-U-P. -S -S now watch this. Ah, oak tree. <laughs> Y'all don't know about old tree? Okay. All right. Group G. See? Mailbox, mailbox regulations. Hold on now. Watch this. Welcome to the USPS. And I typed in group G, and it didn't give me, because it only did USPS. So it might even be a lowercase g. That's probably what the problem is, because I've only been there once, y'all. Regulations. Um, give me one second. Yeah, I think I may have messed up. I it I think it's group G, but let's do the lowercase g. Now, see, when I did that, watch this. Hold on. Let's do that again. Group E box. I think it may be group E. I apologize. That That's why I did that. Group E box, the service provided free with restrictions, restrictions, see, restrictions to customers whose physical addresses are not eligible for any form of USPS carrier deliver services. This service is consistent with the USPS responsibilities to provide universal mail delivery. Okay, so let's go here called Group E Service. I've been through this before when I was in New Mexico. Like I told the postal postmaster here, this is not my first rodeo. So I even told her, I said, then we'll do a general 
service. Well, if they do a general service, you're going to have to come over here and pick it up. No, I'm not. She's 48 miles away. No, I'm not going to have to come over there and pick it up. You know, the it's the attitude that I just, I couldn't handle. You don't get to get that attitude with me. So later today, later today, I will be going over this stuff. I went way too far. I know, you just keep going too far. Why you go all the way at the 300? There's no reason for you to be at 300. You can stop at the 100 because that show is over. No more 100, no more violence, no more stupidity. That show was the stupidest, most violent show out there. Every single time they're coming up with some new, oh, now they're 150 billion years in the future, whatever. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, effective September 6, 2011, right after I moved to New Mexico, because that was an issue that myself and several other people had started with them, getting on their nerves, okay? A group E PO box is provided for free with restrictions to customers. So what are those restrictions? Postal service will remove the descriptive term business location in favor of the general term physical address. The reason why, because the code used to say business location. Now they say physical address. The latter describes residential locations as well as business locations. The Postal Service will delete the reference out of bounds delivery receptacles in favor of the recognized Group E PO box service is not available when a physical address receives any form of USPS carrier delivery. The Postal Service also will revise the DMM to acknowledge carrier delivery service that once established to a particular physical address eliminates Group E eligibility. This revision reflects the final rule federal registry notice published here at this location, which is found at the Postal Explorer. We don't care about that. Okay. This is what this is what applies to me. This is what they are talking about. And this is what I'm having to deal with. Now let's get back to this and then we get rid of this video so y'all can get on about y'all business. Okay. We can go here, y'all, so that y'all can understand. When we are dealing with the 600, 600 mistakes in the title, ladies and gentlemen, understand that they have not corrected. Pay attention, all of them. If there's one mistake, then there is presumably a lot more. 600 is what Congress documented that they found, and they didn't even go through the whole code. When they got the 600, they said, what the and they stop, okay? So this is the document that you guys are gonna go off of to explain, hey, y'all, what the y'all doing? Y'all can't do that, all right? So the code is not law. They don't even go by that. They go by the title being prima facie evidence of law, not the code. So it's not that the code is prima facie evidence of law, it is the title is prima facie evidence that there is some sort of an act of Congress. Just that there is an act of Congress, but not the actual act of Congress. So why are they putting these codes before a jury? Because the jury doesn't know that these codes are not law. So how can someone be given a fair trial and the jury not be told that these codes are not law? Well, because there's ignorance of law is no excuse. The jury's supposed to know the law. So now you guys are going to have to start going back into court and bringing in this fraud up on the court. Wait a minute. I didn't know this. I was trusting Congress for putting this together and authorizing it that it was law. Not that it was evidence that there might be a law. Nope. Sorry. You can't do that because that's not fair. Presumption of law is not fair. Presumption, is not, presumption of law is not based on facts and conclusion of law. Ladies and gentlemen, this is PM Dawn. And they're going to take us out of here. Is it my turn? Y'all know PM Dawn, don't y'all? I'll take you back to the 80s, people. Okay? I'll take you back to the early 90s. 
But right now, we're going to take you to the PM and the dawn at the same time. Do you know how you can get to PM and dawn? It's impossible, actually. That's why they say they'll die without you. Okay? PM dawn, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, as I started this video out to explain to you guys, I'm going to end this video explaining the same thing. All of you need to understand the code is divided into titles. No, you need to understand this. The code is not divided into titles. The titles have been divided into a code. See, the code can't be divided into titles because the titles are supposed to be evidence of positive law. So the code cannot be divided into titles. The titles have to be divided into a code. Do you understand? And that's where they made their mistake. There was no reason for them to put together a code. They could have, just as they did the code, they should, they could have put the title there and, what do you call it, uh, split up the title like they did the Bible. Now, most of you guys are unaware that the Bible, when it was first put together, it was just written words, okay, and the different books, because they were books. That's why it's called the books of the Bible. The Bible means many books. That word, Latin, in its format, means many books so it was written in a book format but later through genius well you know it's divine inspiration it was divided into chapters and verses which works because first and second king was second i mean third and fourth chronicles first and second samuel was first and second i mean first and second chronicles uh third and fourth no it was First and second Samuel, then the third and fourth of Samuel. But it was later first second king and first and second Samuel. It, it, however they did it back then, y'all know what I'm talking about. They, they but they did the revision and it made it a whole lot easier for people to go back and refer to things. Well, see, not with the code. The code didn't make it easier. They created a whole new system. Uh-uh, if it ain't broke, you know what they say about fixing something. So that's what they did. They tried to fix it. Ooh, they made a lot of mistakes. That's what we've been showing y'all. So look, ladies and gentlemen, under the statute at the satcom, 911.com forward slash PDF, in all capital letters is PDF, with an S, PDF, S, 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 S. And then you do a search by hitting control on your keyboard and the letter F, F is in Frank at the same time and just type in the statute. Or you can get to that document a lot easier by typing in www.satcom911.com forward slash PDFs, PDFs in all capital letters forward slash the capital T H E space statutes statutes is all capital s-t-a-t-u-t-e not with an s and get directly there and just look for the forms and download all of them is what i do i download all of them i like six forms in there download them all right pm don just said they're gonna die without y'all i ain't gonna die without y'all i'm gonna keep it moving all right gotta go gotta go gotta go pm don just took us out of here had a little bit of rock ham and Eric B. Then we have before that my boy Bobby Womack. You know what I'm saying? So since we've had all of this entertainment today, whew, I was tired. So I'm about to go. 102 degrees. Like I said, it does feel like about 91. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Take care of yourselves. I'm out of here. Where is my... Hey, anybody see where I put my keys? Where where I put my keys? Oh, there they go. Goodbye.